So you just finished up a steamy session of mutually beneficial, protected, fun time with your partner who can get you pregnant. And then you realize the condom broke. Now what? Today we're talking about five things your gynecologist wants you to know about emergency contraception. I'm going to go over some of the basics, where to get it, and how to use it so that you can better protect yourself, particularly in the volatile world of reproductive health in the United States of America. So what is emergency contraception and when should you use it? Emergency contraception or EC is a form of birth control that stops a pregnancy from forming after intercourse, but before the establishment of a pregnancy. Some people know this as Plan B, which is a brand of one type of emergency contraception, but in reality, there's lots of options and we're going to go over some of those today. So there's basically two categories here. You have pills, like levonorgestrel, which you may know as Plan B, the name it's marketed under, eulopristal acetate, which is marketed as Ella, and something called the USP method, which is an off-label use of birth control pills. For the IUD side, there are copper IUDs, which you may know as Paragard, and hormonal IUDs, which you might know as Mirena or Liletta. However, using hormonal IUDs as emergency contraception is also off-label. The data is decent, but you may have trouble finding someone to do it for you. Times when this might be needed by people would be if non-use of contraception happened, perhaps you've realize you didn't have a condom and decided to go ahead with having sex anyway, if there was a forced episode of intercourse, and if maybe you forgot to use your birth control perfectly, like you missed a couple of pills or you are late getting your depo shot and you had sex in that time frame where it would matter. Importantly, Everything we are discussing in this video is meant to be used as a backup method of contraception. It should not be your primary plan. Why? Because they are way less effective than birth control pills, using the condom right every time, having an IUD in place before you have sex with someone who can get you pregnant. All of those things are going to be far more reliable than what we're talking about today. We'll go through the methods of each of them a little bit later in this video, but importantly, none of these are meant to be used after a pregnancy is established. They are not abortifacient. They do not end an established pregnancy. These are meant to be used between the time of unprotected intercourse with someone who can get you pregnant and before the time of pregnancy. If you are already pregnant, these aren't going to be helpful to you. So while there are pills that are abortifacient or induce abortion, that is not what these are. Things like misoprostol will induce abortion or mifepristone when used in particular ways, but none of these will affect a pregnancy in that way. Now let's jump into how each of these methods actually works. So oral hormonal pills like levonorgestrel, Plan B, or eulopristal acetate, Ella, both work by preventing ovulation. Older data was a little bit less clear and people weren't exactly sure how it worked, but newer data is quite clear that preventing ovulation is the way that both of these work. Meaning if you've already ovulated, it's not going to prevent a pregnancy. And before all the trolls show up in the comments to prove me wrong by telling me what the package inserts on Plan B and LSA, I am aware, I don't care. The modern literature, which is extremely broad and very good, is quite definitive that the method of pregnancy prevention for both of these pills is by preventing ovulation, which means preventing fertilization. So both of them are most effective if they're taken in the first three days or 72 hours. Eulopristal acetate is quite effective up to five days, but it's still preferred to be within the first three days after the unprotected intercourse has occurred. Each day that passes is decreasing efficacy for how reliable it is to prevent pregnancy using these pills. For the intrauterine devices when used as an emergency contraception, the data is not really clear on exactly what the method is for preventing pregnancy. However, they are quite effective. There's no literature to overtly support that they prevent implantation if fertilization has occurred, but there's also no literature to refute that that's the method. So just so you're aware, the pills do not prevent implantation. We don't know regarding the IUDs. When you're using a copper IUD as your primary method of birth control, it works by disrupting sperm and ovum function to prevent fertilization. There's pretty good data on that. And as far as the levonorgestrel or Mirena IUDs go, it typically works by thickening cervical mucus, which decreases the ability of a sperm to meet an ovum. It also can prevent ovulation in some people. Of all the methods of emergency contraception, these are the most likely to be 
preventing implantation if fertilization has occurred. So if that's something that you aren't interested in, then yeah, these are more likely. But we just really don't have very good literature on this. And obviously, if you think about it, this is a very difficult thing to study. How effective is emergency contraception? We're gonna start at the top with the most effective form, which is a copper IUD. Copper IUD, when placed in the first five days after an episode of unprotected intercourse, reduces the risk of pregnancy by 99%. And as a bonus, because it can stay in for the next 10 years, you are then covered with a plan A or ongoing form of contraception after you have that placed. Obviously, the downside is that you have to find someone who can place it for you and get in with them in a quick amount of time, which is really difficult in most places. And especially with all of these changes to funding and legislation, I expect that that's not going to be easy to access for most people anytime soon. The hormonal IUD, which is a 52 milligram levonorgestrel IUD known as Mirena or Liletta, is also up to 99% reduction in pregnancy rates when placed in the first five days after unprotected intercourse. However, this is an off-label use and you may have trouble finding a healthcare provider who's willing to use it for that purpose because traditionally we've only done copper IUDs for that. But the literature is decent on this topic. The next most effective after the IUD will be eulopristal acetate or ELA, which is a 30 milligram pill that you take one time. Taken within the first three days after unprotected intercourse, it reduces pregnancy rates by 75%. And if taken in the first five days, it reduces pregnancy rates by about 60%. So you can see this is not nearly as effective as using some kind of reliable form of pregnancy prevention before or going with the IUD as your option. Oral levonorgestrel or plan B is typically marketed as a 1.5 milligram single dose. Occasionally you will see it as 0.75 in two doses 12 hours apart. It should be taken in the first three days or 72 hours, though there is probably still some benefit up to five days. And usually this is going to be somewhere between a 58 and 79% reduction, depending on the timing of taking the medication. And again, for both of these, if ovulation has already occurred, it's not going to help reduce the risk of pregnancy all that much. A really common question when we talk about this is how does weight affect the medications. I heard that plan B doesn't work if you weigh over 175 pounds, things like this. The truth is both Ella, eulopristal acetate, and plan B, levonorgestrel, have probably some relationship to weight, meaning the higher weight someone is, the less effective the medication is. Although this is quite well defined with plan B, and a little bit less lined out with eulopristal acetate. So for people who have a BMI over 30, and yes, I'm aware BMI is not the best way to measure someone's health, but for the purposes of this discussion, it makes this a little bit easier to remember in your brain in a situation where you need something urgently. You should prefer an IUD over an oral medication, and if you're going to take an oral medication, you should prefer Ella over Plan B, and if you're in a pinch and you don't have any other options, you can still take Plan B because it's still better than nothing. Some data supports taking a double dose of the one and a half milligram levonorgestrel tablets, although this is not typically something we recommend in the United States. It is commonly recommended in places like the UK and here where I am in New Zealand. So it is an off-label use in the US and you probably won't find it for sale as a single dose that high, but it is something that some countries recommend. So the oral USP method is something that some of you probably have heard of but don't really know a lot about. I didn't actually know a ton about it until I started researching a little bit for this video, but it's basically using your already prescribed hormonal contraceptive pills as an emergency contraception in a case where you had unprotected sex or you missed a packet of pills or you got behind or something like that. Now, importantly, this is also off-label, but I would say even more off-label than some of the other things we've talked about today, and it's less effective and it has more side effects. It's generally two doses of oral contraceptive pills 12 hours apart, but at a much higher dose than you would take for normal contraception. The American Academy of Family Practice has a good reference chart if you wanna look up different pill brands and ingredients to see what the recommended doses is. This is going to be about 56 to 89% effective depending on the timing of taking it. And again, people tend to have more side effects, most commonly significant nausea and vomiting. If you vomit up the pills, it's not gonna be very helpful. I'm only including this because it might be a more accessible option for people who live really far 
far from healthcare or pharmacies or who are not in a situation where they could safely seek something like Plan B or Ella because of their social situation. I definitely would recommend pretty much everything else that we've talked about in this video before that. So where can you get it? I'll start this answer by saying that having it on hand before you need it increases how well it works because then you don't have the delay in time from, oh my God, the condom broke. What am I going to do? What medicine will I get? Where will I get it? To, okay, I've taken the medication. You just have your backup, you know, it, under the sink somewhere. You can get a prescription for Ella. Levonorgestrel or Plan B is over the counter. And then obviously the IUDs don't fall into this category because you can't really just keep those around for future use. There are some websites you can order from as well. I know Plan B is on Amazon. 3forfreedom.com has really great information for accessing mail order emergency contraception and birth control as well as abortion pills. Dr. Jennifer Lincoln is who introduced me to that site. I think she's the person behind it, but it's a very good, concise, easy to look at, easy to read resource. So I'd highly recommend checking that out and trying to keep some form of emergency contraception on hand if you feel like there's a chance you might ever need it. Is emergency contraception safe? There is no absolute contraindication to the use of emergency contraception other than current pregnancy. A pregnancy test should probably be taken before you use any of these, although only if that's easily accessible for the oral medications. Before you have an IED put in, almost every healthcare provider is going to want to check a pregnancy test first just because of the implications of placing an IUD into a uterus that is pregnant. As far as side effects go, most of the side effects are going to be relatively short-lived, but they are going to be things that you commonly see with hormonal changes or PMS. So menstrual disruptions, headache, nausea, sometimes people get breast tenderness, all of those things that you tend to see before your period starts would be common with a medication like Ella or Plan B. Although for the most part, both of those medications are generally very well tolerated. I've seen a lot of people ask if it's unhealthy for you to use Plan B many times. And while there's no overt concerns for health complications for using this multiple times, for the reasons we discussed earlier, it definitely isn't recommended, primarily because you're much more likely to eventually see it fail than if you were using something more reliable. It's also way more expensive than just normal contraception. All right, I hope that you learned something today. If you're new here and you'd like to subscribe, we talk about all things periods, pregnancy, sex ed, and everything in between. Check out the Three for Freedom website. I will link it in the description box below. If you have any questions, you can leave those in the comments down below. If you're not subscribed and you'd like to be, we'd love to have you. Hit that subscribe button, turn on notifications so you never miss an upload. I'll see you next Monday.